I could not possibly be more excited to be here today for a host of reasons, but not least of which is this is an amazing gathering every year, and you guys are absolutely amazing, and so it's wonderful to be here. I add a salute to Barack and Asli and the entire team at Etuhum have done an amazing job, as always, but I salute mostly all of you, many of whom I've gotten a chance to meet overall. You are heroes in your country, you're heroes of the ecosystem, because as we all know, great entrepreneurship has no boundaries, it has no borders, and so it's wonderful to be here with you. Uh, nothing could make me more excited, however, to be with one of the great builders of enterprises here in Turkey. Anzadi, all of you know, and many of you know her story overall, uh, but there's just so much that she's done in building around Doğan, generally speaking, but of course, as was alluded to before, has been a founder of Hesbi Barada, which is the great e-commerce player and I think ecosystem builder generally here. But what, what floors me as much as this great building of business and the great leadership that was described uh, is that this is someone who really thinks about the broader world that we live in in powerful ways and has done many activities with civil society generally around the world, not just in Turkey. And as we're about to talk in a moment, I think has been one of the leaders about the ramifications. For me, one of the most exciting trends happening beyond robotics, beyond AI or anything else, but is the rise of women generally in our world, but particularly in the areas of um, entrepreneurship and beyond. So it's an honor to be with you overall. You. And if you don't mind, because uh, I could talk to you about a hundred things, but I'd love to start a little bit broader and then come down, we can talk about Hepsi Barada overall. It, it is obvious to say that we are living in very strange and unusual times in Turkey, but everywhere in the world. And being a great entrepreneur means to be able to manage uncertainty in very powerful ways, but you've been a leader in managing and seeing things change and evolve very powerful ways. And I just wonder if you could share some observations about being a leader in uncertainty and how you sort of cope with it, deal with it, and, and build upon it. Sure. Uh, this, this year has been a very important year for, for our company. And we, we've been around for more than a decade. So we, are, we think long term. We make sure the fundamentals of our business is strong and we tend to not to shift our strategy with uh, daily uh, daily uncertainties and with we still uh, like we believe to the dynamics uh, of our country we believe into the fundamentals of our business and we are uh, committed we have accelerated our investments uh, in the last two years we invested more than 200 million tl uh, into our platform, into our fulfillment centers, into, uh, you know, into making Hepsi Burada an engine to drive digitalization of uh, Turkish retail. And this year has been spe specially important for a couple of reasons, which I want to share with you. First one, we have uh, opened our platform to third party merchants. Um, it gives me great pleasure to see thousands of merchants across country or established retailers. They, we give them the opportunity to meet with 57 million monthly visits. Um, and we have also improved the product selection significantly. We have more than 2.5 million uh, unique products uh, for our customers. Um, and we opened the uh, marketplace, but we still control the process end to end. So we are not a listing company. We own our own catalog, uh, and the merchants list their prices and availability on, uh, on, on the products that we control, the content, the video. Uh, we are also uh, very committed to be fair uh, and transparent with the way we treat our retail business and our merchants. The customer sits at the center of, buy, of our buy box logic and whoever has a better product with better dispatch time, better prices gets the buy box. Another very important initiative we've launched is Hepsi Pay. It's a payment company which enables uh, retailers who wants to go who wants to go digital to be able to collect payments within a day. Uh, with Hepsi Pay, the, our merchants can have access to attractive bank campaigns, many uh, different installment options, uh, as well as a sophisticated fraud tool that will minimize their uh, chargeback risk. Uh, and the last, which I believe 
is very important for the general uh, e-commerce uh, industry is the launch of our last mile delivery, which is Hepsi Express. Currently, is at a pilot stage, uh, but we we aim to roll it across Istanbul in the next two to three quarters. Istanbul only. You'll start there. At the moment, Istanbul only. So, the, I mean, this is what we call Silicon Valley, a full stack. I mean, you literally are in every aspect of this value chain from really beginning to end. It is costly. It is gutsy. It's not an easy thing to do. And e-commerce, generally speaking, there's always pressure on, on, um, on margins. And, of course, it's wonderful that there's such opportunity for more customers to come on, onto the system now because more and more people are becoming e-commerce. How, how do you load and think in your mind about the opportunity that is growing with the risk that you take in putting yourself in this full stack? And, and what keeps you up late at night? How do you think about that? Uh, you know, e-commerce is a complex business model, and it has low margins, and it is capex incentive. It's not a, uh, you know, it, it is heavily capex in intensive. But this don't keep me awake at night because we've been around for more than a decade. We have a proven business model. We have a proven uh, sustainable growth track record and uh, profitability as well. What keeps me and my team awake at night are issues related with customer service. When the delivery company misses the service level, when because of the high demand our merchants uh, can't handle uh, the picking process and misses the dispatch time, or for one reason or another backlogs uh, happen in our, in our fulfillment center. Anything that makes our customer unhappy are the things that we keep awake and we worry. Because at the end of the day, it, this is the promise we give to our customer. And trust is the most, one single most important value we carry on our brand. And we are committed to, to protect that value at any cost. If, if we need to solve the delivery problem, then we have to go and solve it. If we need to solve the, you know, the merchants who don't have single item picking capability, then we have to invest into fulfillment centers that have bigger capacity than our retail business so we can tell our merchants, come, we'll do single item picking for you. So it's all about customer. It's all about the promise we give to our customer and how we keep that promise. And as you go last mile, this is only going to become more important as ever before, I would think. Yes. And are the KPIs clear? Does the culture understand how important it is to be able to be this customer service that anything less than perfect is not sort of the Hepsi Barada way? How is that? Yeah, I, I think that is quite clear. In our decision-making process, it's very clear. For us, it's always customer satisfaction, whether it's top line, margin, you know, cost cutting, whatever decision we make, we choose customer satisfaction over all the other criteria. Now, there's not an entrepreneur here who doesn't think, first and foremost, the most important thing to their organization is talent finding, growing, recruiting great talent in a great enterprise like yours, it becomes even a bigger multiplier issue overall. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like, particularly in this day and age, to find world-class talent and keep them and to be able to grow them into something that doesn't get complacent but actually can continue the growth that you've built since you started the company? Sure. sure. Before I talk uh, about talent, I want to emphasize one more time the importance of being customer-focused. And I... I would like to encourage all entrepreneurs to start from customer and walk back. Don't start from your product and then go to the customer. Start from your customer, what you solve for that customer, what is it that the customer needs, and then walk your, back, your way back to the product. Talent, which is the most important uh, asset we have. You know, we, we are not an industry, industrial company, so our talent is what we have. Let me tell you, our, the way we recruit talent has slightly changed in the last two years. Before that, we used to be more focused on experience 
based recruiting. We would look at what the candidate has done the before resume us, the, the resume. Right. In the last two years, we moved away to a more character-based recruiting. Independent of what the candidate has done, we look at whether she or he has potential to learn, the resilience, the problem-solving capabilities, and his or her personal values, do they match our values? Because we try to solve such unique problems that no other company faces or no other industry faces, it is very important that we find individuals with learning capability, with, who have resilience, who share the same values with us. This is one uh, point I would like to make. And the second one, of course, we do every, everything that most of the companies do in terms of talent attraction and retention. We go to universities, we talk about our companies, we try to, we have long-term incentive plans, we try to make sure the KPIs are clear, there's a transparent uh, way to measure the KPIs. But all this, in a way, are hygiene factors. You have to have it. I believe what makes a young professional or a young entrepreneur, because I also believe companies like ours can only grow with entrepreneurs. So I see everyone in my team as an entrepreneur. What makes she or he stay in a company when they have lots of other options are to do with more emotional reasons. Do they believe to the impact the company makes? Do they believe they make a difference in that company? Is there an entrepreneurial environment? Do they learn? Do they develop themselves? Do they like their colleagues? Is, it, is this kind of emotions that makes professionals stay with a company? And, and this is the environment we want to create in our company, a common goal, a common dream that is shared by everyone, that everyone believes from their heart to the dream they share. If you have that, then you'll keep your stars. That's how we see it. So it's a perfect segue, because I've been thinking a lot about how e-commerce is changing generally and how technology is disrupting. I mean, there's someone in this audience right now is thinking in the back of their head, I'm going to disrupt Pepsi Barat at one day. I mean, this is the world we live in, and it's very exciting at one level. But it's got ramifications on talent, what kind of talent you want for the future, not just the talent for right now. And it also begs the, the strategic question, what, what do you think Epsi Barat is going to look like three years from now? What are the things which are evolving and changing, not only you're building to, but you're watching carefully as they may affect you and have the right talent for that? Sure. The fundamentals will stay the same. It's, it will be all about selection, price, and service. When the, fu the fundamentals will stay the same, but it will be much, much much easier for the customer to find the product they're looking and to have it delivered to their home. So the personalization will take a new whole level. You know, it's been a buzzword for more than a decade now. We can do it now. We, but with the artificial intelligence, with machine learning, combined with technologies that enable picture recognition, video recognition, we will see a different kind of personalization. And it will be much easier for us to predict what you want, when you want, and how you want it delivered. The, another big shift will happen in the last mile delivery. When the last mile delivery starts moving from traditional companies to technology companies, then we will see delivery by appointment, dynamic address changes, uh, you know, click and collect to be industry standards. Another area which we think a lot is a better integration between offline and online. Today, that integration is not seamless for the customer. We can't 100% match customer's location to the product in that location. It is much more centralized. We expect with the 
advancements in last mile delivery and advancements in the stock management and integration to have a more distributed uh, in, uh, product and customer matching. I can't remember, I think it was Danny Reimer of Index Ventures, a big global venture capital fund, who's effectively saying it's not gonna be too long where, where physical stores are truly finally irrelevant. They may be showcases, but the idea of a transaction, a physical store will go away. Do you agree with that? And do you think that's in three to five years or do you think that's farther off? Uh, I mean, I don't see the whole retail turning into dark stores. Uh, I, <clears throat> instead, I see more of a better integration. The, it, this, this depends, this is all about what is the cost of delivering a product from central warehouse to a customer versus the cost of single item picking from a store and a shorter distance delivery. So we'll see which one is gonna win. We win it out. Win. But I believe it will be a coexistence. I believe it will be better offline, online connection and a coexistence and seamless experience for the customer. Do you think that last mile will be kind of a gig economy thing where you can open up networks and do it distributed or do you think you have to continue to own everything in the way that you have historically? The, the, the tech-based, technology-based last mile delivery companies have to think in terms of shared economy, in terms of distributing the load and distributing the, 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 the carrier. But there is, how do we control the service level with that distributed model is, we don't know. So as Hepsi Express will start as owning it, but we want to build our architecture and our infrastructure in a way we can make it distributed. distributed. That's a beautiful thing. Now, you have this amazing ecosystem, and I've actually seen some last mile startups from Istanbul. We'll see. It's not an easy thing to do. But how do you think about Hepsi Barada being engaged in the community? How do you think that there's co-authorship, not just what you do for them or they pitching to you, but what can be done to really make this community rise together in your view? I would like to encourage all entrepreneurs to think of Hepsi Burada and Doan Online, not just as a strategic investor, which we are, but also as a platform to launch the product you are working on, whether it's an analytic tool or whether it's a root optimization software. We can be, we are a platform at a scale where that can be the gateway for your product launch. You know, we, we are working on complex problems and we, we know we can't solve it all, all by ourselves. We know there are difficulties to finding, there are difficulties to keep innovation in a large organization like Hepsi Burada, which we try a lot because it will not happen without innovation. So we make an effort, we keep the innovative culture in our industry. But we know innovation usually happens from startups. So that's why we want to be connected with the entrepreneurial ecosystem around the region. And we want to offer our platform as a way to launch your product. And also we are connected with the R&D centers of universities. We also want the PhD stu uh, students, the R&D centers, to think together with us how we can solve it, how we can improve uh, efficiency, and how we can create a better customer experience. Look, I tell you, there are a lot of large organizations who talk this and then they stuff it in some CSR initiative. And what you need to understand is this is the real deal. This is a real commitment to the ecosystem and, again, this sense of co-authorship which uh, actions will speak louder than words, and I think it's fantastic you lean out this way. And as I wrap now with the actions and words, I'd like to end where I started or mentioned parenthetically, because I really am not just saying this. I, I spent a lot of times in around genomics. I spent a lot of time around robotics and VR and many things. All of it blows me away. All of it excites me, but nothing excites me like seeing the rise of women in our economy, generally speaking, in society, generally, 
and in particular in some of the stuff that I've seen here, but you really have put action into the words there. And I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about your own experience, about what's happening you see here in Turkey and beyond as women are coming, the new generation are rising. Sure. I believe the way to global peace can only happen if we have true gender equality. When we have hundreds of millions of girls who can't even register to school around the globe, where we have millions of girls getting married under the age of 15, we will never reach the global peace. That's why I, I am committed to do everything in my power to bring awareness, to create solutions for this problem. Uh, we have started a social mobilization campaign 10 years ago called Daddy Sent Me to School, which, had, which was a perfect example of public-private partnership. It had really amazing uh, results. Today, we don't have inequality between girls and boys at the secondary uh, school, but we have other problems. We have... Uh, Women participation to workforce is only 27% compared to 50% in Europe. Women in technology is a global problem. Absolutely. We, is a global problem. So we, now we spent our effort to think on, you know, we are working on initiatives to improve girls in STEAM, uh, what we can do to, to make sure we have more girls more women in the technology. How are you feeling? How far do we have to go? It, it is a challenge. We have to start. I, this has to do with such core values that are embedded into our DNA. And it's not uh, nation-specific. You go to US, even in Scandinavia, which they are really ahead on women issues, even they have less women in technology. So you, it's an effort. We have to record our, our values to make sure uh, that we have equality in technology as well. Well, there are people like you. It's, it will happen, and people like you will happen bottom up. And I could spend two hours with you, and it's been a joy to be with you. So thank you very thank much for you. spending time. Thank you.